what I'm trying to do in this video is I'm going to explain to you how frog tape works as opposed to a standard 3M 2090 tape and show you how it performs in comparison to the standard 3M 2090. I just picked this one because everybody seems to know what this one is. You've seen it all in the big box stores. You're going to a Home Depot or a Lowe's and this is the tape that's always in the bin on sale. And this is your uh, frog tape. In this case it's frog tape delicate. It's the yellow one. Uh, it comes in this little happy Tupperware container and the whole point for the Tupperware is because it keeps moisture from the air out and you'll see what I'm talking about. But basically how frog tape functions is that in this adhesive they put an additive uh, kind of like what's in a kid's diaper that, that holds moisture and what it does is when the, the moisture from the paint tries to get underneath it the additive will expand to block the paint from getting underneath the tape and I'm going to show you how that additive works and then I'm going to show you how this actually performs on a, a couple of different surfaces and, and give you some pointers but with frog tape or any of the tapes I guess even 3M has some of their own now you make sure you put it back into an airtight container when you're done because the moisture that activates the the barrier component of the tape also makes the tape go bad and you have to throw it away all right, this is what happens when 30 mils of water just hits a table. It makes a spot a little bit bigger than my hand. This is what 30 mils of water looks like with frog tape's active ingredient, the additive in the edges that prevents the water from bleeding past it. It just will continue to absorb the moisture, much like a diaper, and prevent it from sneaking around the edges. And that's how it keeps the paint from leaking underneath it. And the weight of the water is a little bit more than it's intended to, but you can see what's happening. And at the end of it, you can see it's a lot smaller than the last pile was. That's how frog tape works. It keeps the water from getting underneath the regular tape by expanding and sealing up any voids in the, the surface. Okay. This is the surface we're going to use to test the frog tape. We've just taken a piece of glass, painted it with some latex poly, and we intentionally made all these big nasty lines and ridges and dimples in it because that's where paint would bleed is where you would have a, a crease like this. The mortar would get underneath it, the paint would get underneath it, and, and travel in that groove underneath the tape film. So we're going to lay this down. I'm going to make some, put some tape on here, and we're going to see how the frog tape compares to the regular tape. So what we've got here is uh, 3M's 2090 series inch and a half blue tape. Most people probably use this one. Uh, and we have frog tape delicate in an inch and a half and we're going to put them on that, that textured surface that we've got across some of the bigger bumps just so that we can, uh, can see how it works and what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the tape like this I'm not pushing it down yet I'm going to use a standard 3 inch roller so that I can apply fairly even pressure to all areas and not favor any surface and we're just going to take a paint roller, put some paint on it, and try to see if it bleeds through one surface to the other. We're not looking for technique here, we're looking to see if it works. Oh, on this product, it, you can see it. It's bled through, and on this one you can see how crystal clear the line is on the, on the yellow tape. But on the blue tape, you can, especially right over here, you can see how it's actually bled right underneath the surface. And that's how frog tape works. It the, the expands and seals out like a gasket so that your paint can't get underneath the edge. I take it off. You'll see how yucky the 3M edge looks and how sharp the frog tape edge looks. It's not that the frog t the uh, 3M tape's bad tape. It just doesn't have that same edge lock material in it paint block they call it. That's their proprietary name. Alright, there's one other thing I wanted to get into is when you take tape off of a wall everybody has a tendency to just go like this. And what happens when you do that is you can do stuff like this right here where you peel the paint off of the wall and that'll happen whether you're using that tape or that kind of tape what you should always do is you should take the tape and pull it away from at a 90 degree angle like this 
And what that does is it almost acts like a scissor. It cuts it away so that there's no adhesion and it doesn't tend to lift up your, your surface. Again, it's, it's just you take the tape, you grab it, and you just pull it like this. And you go slow and steady and gentle and you don't tend to lift up the paint like you would. Just a small hint.